recap, in my previous lecture we have seen the applications, the properties and the definition as well for the Méline transform. In today's lecture, I am going to introduce yet another new transform known as the Hilbert transform. So, people especially in the electronics and communication background or in aerospace background, they should be quite familiar with the utility and the importance of this transform. So, I am another fact is that Hilbert transforms are closely associated with the Fourier transforms. In particular, we will see that Hilbert transforms are the product of the Fourier transforms in the convolution sense. So, without waiting much, let us look at what are these transforms. So, Hilbert transforms have lot of applications. So, before we move on to the definition, I wanted to highlight the applications of Hilbert transforms which are not limited, but definitely present in these areas. So, we will see lot of applications in the areas of fluid mechanics, in the areas of aerodynamics and signal processing. as well as in electronics. So, so, let us look at what is the Hilbert transform of a function. So, I am going to assume a function, a piecewise continuous function, let f of t be defined on a real line. Okay. So, I am going to start with the function being real and I take my variable t, the argument of this function taking any value on the real axis. Then its Hilbert transform f of h, now f of h I denote by the Hilbert transform to be f hat of h. So, f hat of h subscript h of x is defined as the Hilbert transform of f of h is h of f of t which is also given by, by this following integral. So, this is the integral of 1 over pi a, an, an integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of t, t minus x dt. Now, notice that this is not this particular integral, let, let me just talk a little bit about this integral. So, this particular integral where I have specified the, the range uh, of the integral that is this is a definite integral over the real axis. So, in general this is not well, in, in particular this is not a contour integral, this integral is also called as the Cauchy principal value integral, Cauchy principal value integral and what I mean by that is that we see that in this integral there is the, the integrand has a singularity at t equal to x. So, in, in when we have to evaluate the Cauchy principal value integral, we need to evade this singularity. So, this integral boils down to the following sum of two integrals. So, from negative infinity to let us say a value very close to x, but not exactly x, let us say x minus epsilon plus an integral again away from x on from the right to infinity. Okay, so, and we take we take this limit epsilon going to 0, so that we are as close to the point of singularity as possible. So, again to repeat this particular integral is not a contour integral, but the principal value integral which is evaluated over the real axis in and in doing so we are evading the point of singularity which is x. So, again to recap, let us again look at the Hilbert. 
So, let me call this as my definition 1, the, Hil the definition of Hilbert transform. So, 1, the definition in 1 is as follows, I see that this is also equal to, so my Hilbert transform of f defined at x is also, can also be written in the form of some, con in the form of a convolution. So, in particular this integral is 1 by 2 pi times negative infinity to infinity f of t times, so this will be square root 2 by pi, so we see that times 1 by, let me take this minus out, so minus x minus t. So, we see that this particular integral is written in the form of in the form of the product of two function. So, this or this is in the form of the convolution of f star with g in the Fourier sense. So, I have written the Hilbert transform as a convolution of two functions in the Fourier sense. So, as we can see that my f is this particular function and g of x minus t is this particular function. So, again to rewrite my Hilbert transform is the convolution of two function integral negative infinity to infinity f of t g of x minus t dt, where my function g of x can be written as negative square root 2 by pi 1 by x. Okay, so, which means that this is nothing but, well this is the product of, well this is the convolution of f star g in the Fourier sense. So, then let us take, let me call this as my expression 2 again the definition in the product sense in the in the convolution sense so we take we take a fourier transform we take a fourier transform of 2 to see what happens okay so we say that so we take a fourier transform of the hilbert transform of f and that is equal to the product of the Fourier transforms of the two function. So, where my f is the Fourier transform of the original function small f and g is the Fourier transform of this particular function negative square root 2 by pi 1 by x. So, so the variable here is so, g of the variable of integration is t. So, that would have been g of t in, in this integral. Okay. So, I can evaluate this transform right away using the techniques that I have taught in my Fourier transforms class and this comes out to be, I am going to right away give you the answer. This is iota, iota is the complex square root negative 1 sin of k. So, which means that my Hilbert transform, let me say capital F h, which is nothing but the Fourier transform of the Hilbert transform, this is f times g or I get that my f is the Hilbert transform divided by g of k. Now, g of k, I know what is g of k, this is I can again rewrite this expression as f of h times negative i sin k. Okay. So, when I take, when I, when I substitute the value of g of k, I get this expression. Okay. I, I factorize to get this expression. So, now let me call this expression as, this equation as 3. So, I am going to take my inverse inverse Fourier transform 
I am going to take my inverse Fourier transform of 3 to get the following. I see that f of x or let so f of x is equal to 1 by square root 2 pi integral negative infinity to infinity f of k e to the power i k x dx okay, uh, dk. Okay, so, I get that this is also equal to 1 by square root 2 pi integral negative infinity to infinity the, the Fourier transform of f k capital F k is given here. I get that this is equal to f h f h at k times negative i sin k okay, times e to the power i k x d k. Okay. So, then let us look at this expression. So, if I take this minus out of the integration, I see that this particular integration is nothing but again the inverse of the convolution of f h that is the Hilbert transform times negative g of x. So, we see that we see sorry neg, uh, well the negative is outside. So, this is the Fourier transform of g of x. Okay, so, what I have just mentioned is the following f of x is negative it is negative integral negative infinity to infinity the Fourier transform of the Hilbert transform of f times the Fourier transform of g e to the power i k x d k. So, this is again we see that this is of the convolution form f of h. So, this is nothing but the Fourier transform of f h times well Fourier transform. This is the Fourier transform of f h times the Fourier transform of of g and then we are taking the inverse Fourier transform of the product of these two Fourier transforms. I am going to get that this is nothing but f h convolution with g, but with a negative sign here outside. So, I put a negative sign and I see that this is also equal to when I use the definition of this convolution, I get that this is negative integral to in infinity to infinity f of f h hat d let us define a new variable which is our integration variable f h hat d zeta d zeta times t minus zeta or this is nothing but the Hilbert transform of my function f h hat zeta. So, what I have shown here is that so on the left hand side f of x is nothing but the Hilbert transform inverse of the Hilbert transform of f. Okay, so, this becomes Hilbert transform of f. So, what I have shown here is that the Hilbert inverse the inverse transform of a particular function is well with a minus sign is negative of the Hilbert transform or I see that the Hilbert transform of the Hilbert transform of the function f gives me negative of f. Okay. So, so, in this particular example the, the transform inverse of the transform is the, the same transform with a negative sign. So, the inverse transform is nothing but the same transform with a negative sign. Okay. So, so, that defines my Hilbert transform as well as the inverse. So, this is my definition of the inverse Hilbert transform. Okay. Okay, or I can use this as my definition let me call this as as 4. So, the inverse of the Hilbert transform is defined here by this x expression on the right hand side 
which I call it 4. So, moving on. So, before I move on there is just one more uh, one more comment that I want to pass on. Notice that the Hilbert the, Hil the effect of Hilbert transform is that two applications of Hilbert transform is shifting the function by negative 1. So, if I were to talk in complex plane one two applications of Hilbert transform is shifting the angle of if suppose this function f was defined on the complex plane it is shifting the 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 orientation of the function by 180 degrees. So, minus 1 denotes a phase shift by 180 degrees, which means the effect of Hilbert transform is to shift h of f has the effect of shifting shifting the Fourier wave number Fourier wave number by pi by 2. You see that the application of two Hilbert transforms shifts the phase by pi negative 1 or correspondingly the application of one Hilbert transform is going to phase shift by an angle pi by 2. Okay. We will see what this effect is very soon in some of our example. Okay. So, well, so just to give you an idea, it means that if I were to use h of let us say example, if I were to find the Hilbert transform of some Fourier coefficient, let us say cos of omega t, we see that we will evaluate this to find that this is nothing but cos this is equal to sin of omega x or this is nothing but equal to cos of omega x minus pi by 2. So, once we evaluate the Hilbert transform which we will see next, we will see that the effect is to phase shift the function the, the Fourier wave number of the function by pi by 2. Okay. Okay, so, let us look at some examples. So, find the Hilbert transform for f of t equals 1 or 0 for t less than a and otherwise outside an interval the function is 0. So, I need to find the Hilbert transform of this function. So, this is the starting example you will see that the Hilbert transform evaluation is quite straightforward. We use the definition Hilbert transform of a function is 1 by pi the Cauchy principal value integral from negative infinity to infinity times well we can see that this is this is nothing but the heavy side function h of a minus mod t right. So, divided by so we see that divided by t minus x right d t. Okay. So, replacing the, the heavy side function I get that this infinite integral changes to a finite integral from minus a to a 1 d t divided by t minus x. Now, notice that of course, since this is a Cauchy principal value integration we see that we have to worry about the singularity at point t equal to x. So, let us say that I divide my evaluation of the integral into two cases. The first case would be when mod x is greater than a. So, which means that there is no singularity, there is no singularity, the singularity x lies outside the range of integration. So, no singularity. Okay, since t is from minus a to a. Okay. So, we, we do not have a singularity in this case. So, I can let me call this as 1. I can evaluate 1 right away using my standard integration. I get that this is equal to log the natural log of mod t minus x from 
negative a to a to get that this is also equal to 1 by pi log of mod a minus x minus log of mod a plus x. So, this is 1 by pi log of mod a minus x by a plus x. Okay. So, then the other case that I have to worry about is when that there is a singularity or mod x is less than a. So, which means that in this case I have a singularity in the integral at at x. Okay. So, now I have to evaluate this integral 1 using the standard Cauchy principle value int integration definition. So, 1 becomes, so I am going to divide it into two integrals, this is 1 over pi integral from minus a to x, x minus epsilon of 1 by t minus x plus integration x plus epsilon to a of d t divided by t minus x. Okay. So, we see that now both these integrals that I have described here can be evaluated right away because there is no singularity. We have already ev evaded the singularity at t equal to x. So, let us evaluate the two integrals. I get the following result. So, 1 is 1 by pi the first integration is log of mod t minus x and this is evaluated at from a to x minus epsilon plus the second integration is log t minus x and this is evaluated from x plus epsilon to a and I get that this is also equal to the following. So, let us now start plugging in. So, I get that 1 by pi when I put in the limits I get the following. I get that the first term is log of epsilon minus log of well this is from minus a and that is plus a. So, the second term I get is log of mod a well a plus x then from the other integral I get the following terms log of mod a minus x minus log of epsilon. Okay. So, and we see that these two integrals they cancel this sorry these two values they cancel. So, th there is no need to take any limit as such. So, I see that the answer that we get is same as what we had evaluated earlier and that is this following value. Okay. So, we see that, so the conclusion is that the Fourier sorry the Hilbert transform of this following function 1 by t minus x, t minus x is 1 by pi log of mod a minus well this with a heavy side function a minus mod t, this is nothing but log of mod a minus x by a plus x whether or not we have a singularity. So, we have evaluated all the cases to find that the Hilbert transform comes out to be identical in whether there is a singularity in the integral or whether there is no singularity. Okay. So, let us move on.